Welcome. Today we design our own sentence embedder where we try to implement a pre trained model from Hugging Face, Cybird, a bird model for scientific vocabulary and scientific content. We design our sentence embedder and we have a look if we apply this sentence embedding to Tech Trends 2021 from Deloitte. If our little artificial intelligence system will be able to deduct the main content of the document. So here we go. As always, I have a JupyterLab environment I call Topology. We are operating in PyTorch. We import our numbers. We import our dimensionality reduction algorithm, UMAP, our cluster algorithm, some widgets, our sentence transformers, and of course, our transformers from Hugging Face. All the sentences are already downloaded into my text file. And let's have a look at all the sentences, 1,782 sentences, where the maximum length of a sentence, the number of words, uh, I reduced to about 36, 37 words. And if you want to know for sure, it is sentence number 1,169, and we have 36 number of words in it. And you see this, this sense looks like a Gauss Glockenkurve and about 10, 12 words per sentence is our peak distribution here. You already know about BERT, you know about the BERT sentence transformer, here are the proceedings. But today we are not looking for a pre-trained model by sentence transformer, but we are like paraphrase is still Roberta. But we are looking for a model that has not been pre-trained for sentence embedding, but the model is available on Hugging Face. So let's have a look at this. And our first candidate is of course Cybert. Cybert is a BERT model trained on scientific text. Papers from the corpus of semanticscholar.org, about 1.14 million papers, 3.1 billion of tokens, and they trained full text, not just the abstracts of the documentation. It has its own vocabulary and it generates, like BERT, content specific embeddings of each and every word. So here we go. From Hugging Face, we download transformers, auto tokenize it, a model. Yeah, we do not need right now the sequence classification. And we generated a model. The model name from Hugging Face here, we have from Ellen AI, the Cybert vocabulary uncased. And we apply our auto tokenizer and our auto model. If you want to have a look at how the model you just downloaded looks like, it's a bird model with bird embeddings. And you have, I guess it's about 12 bird layers. Let's have a look at it in detail. Yeah, it's about 12 bird layers, attention, then you have an output and you have a pooling layer. Now, just to give you an indication about the vocabulary, remember BERT has about a vocabulary strength of about 30,000 word pieces. Let's choose here a particular sentence, and our sentence is enterprise technologies may harbor doubts about the scalability performance, list industry-specific platform opportunities, continuous growth, blah, blah, blah. And you see here that with our auto-tokenizer from Cybert, enterprise is within the vocabulary of Cybert, technologies is not. So you see here word pieces. System knows technol, and there are two word pieces it adds. This indicates that it is not a word in itself. And the second part would be doubts, the plural form of doubt. This is not in the vocabulary. Now, just for comparison, we do the same for the still bird, and we have a look at the vocabulary for the same sentence. And you see here now, if we compare those two sentences, the still bird has techno in its vocabulary base, and logist is the next word piece. So here we have one word with two additional word pieces. We have one word with one additional word piece. Doubts is now within the vocabulary, but scalability is not. So we have another word and a word piece. So you see, depending on the pre-trained model you use and 
the set of documents those models were trained on, your vocabulary will look significantly differ different. And yeah, I have another GPT-2 from Hugging Face, same idea. And if I load this sentence, it takes a little bit of time. And you see, see here now, enterprise, now two words, tech, instead of technologist, we have now techn and ologist. <laughs> and we have here scalability is now scale and ability. So you see, depending on the data set, all these models have been trained for the words, the whole words that are within the vocabulary of this pre-trained model are really different. And the result is a lesson learned. Every pre-trained model has its own optimized vocabulary since it was trained on a specific set of documents for a defined task, therefore choose wisely. But as I told you now, we want to build our own sentence embedder. And again, we have a sentence, we have a bird model, we can download from Hugging Face, we have a pooling layer, and finally we get a fixed length vector. And to create it, it is easy. As already told you, from Hugging Face, we download from Ln AI Cyborg and Cased. We have the knowledge that the maximum length of a sentence within our document is about 36 words of the maximum sentence. Therefore, if we deconstruct the words, let's say with a factor of four or five to word pieces, we know that if we have a maximum sequence length of 512, we should be fine with the length of our sentence. I have a pooling layer, a pooling model, and have another one, but as you can see, you can construct it. Um, a feed forward network with another dense model and we construct our model from sentence transformer now with our word embedding model and our word embedding model is here now cyber that is not available as a pre-trained model from sentence transformers so you can choose your own model you have the pooling layer and i do not apply a feed forward network a dense model or another pooling layer but you can play around with this and see if you can improve the performance of your system if you do not want to use the sentence, the sentence transformer, or you download the software, they themselves show you that there is a way to go. Uh, if you define now a mean pooling function with an attention mask, the tokenizer, the model, the tokenizer with the padding, the truncation, the tensors, of course, PyTorch, since we are not working here in TensorFlow, you have the model encoded with the encoded input. And finally, you come up with some sentence embeddings applying the de former defined function of mean pooling with the attention mask. And if you want to know the geniuses who invented this, uh, Siamese Bird Network, Ryman Nils, and Ernia. Sorry for the pronunciation of the name. So now that we have defined our model, we now encode our model. Oh, great. Model is not encoded. Yes because we have not run piece. This cell, so takes about five seconds. And now we can go back and encode the model since now it is defined. And since Cybert is, if I remember correctly, also is based on BERT on a 768 dimensional Feature set, I think it should take, oh yeah, about two minutes for the whole calculation to be done. Now, while my little PC is doing all the calculation, we can have a little look at our next building block, and this is dimensionality reduction. Because as I will show you, we come up now that for each and every sentence, we get a sentence embedding. And this sentence embedding is, if I'm correct, 768 dimensional coordinate set in a feature space. And if, if you have 1000 or 2000 sentences, no problems. But I will show you in a later video, if you have millions of sentences, I would highly recommend that you reduce the complexity of more than 1000 1, dimensions to about 10 or 12 dimension. You speed up the process significantly. But of course, if you have unlimited computer resources, welcome. Go the long way. 
So it took about one minute and 15 seconds to encode our model. And we are a 706 to 8 dimensional feature space. The amount of our sentences did not change, 1782 sentences. Perfect. So now how to reduce the dimensionality of our artificial topological space. The idea behind this is genius and you have here the link umap minus learn where you all get all their interesting information. In short, simplicial complexes are a mean to construct a topological space out of simple combinatorical components. It's genius. We have two parameters that are really important. It is the neighbors and it is the, the number of components. The number of components are more or less the number of dimension you want to reduce your artificial topological space to. Neighbors is important and significant because it constrains the size of the local neighborhood you might will look at when attempting to learn the manifold structure of the data. This means the lower this value is, the more detail of the local topological structure you will get. In general, to recommend uh, UMAP neighbors to be around 20, to have a good mixture of local and global learning manifold topological structure. Let's try 12. Construction takes about 30 seconds, I suppose. And if we have found our, our 12 dimensional embedding, of course, we're going to cluster it. We want to see in this 12 dimensional embedding of 1700 sentences, can we identify the cluster? And going hand in hand with UMAP, we have a beautiful cluster algorithm. HDB scan, you can choose your cluster selection methodology, EOF or LEAF. I go with LEAF. And as you can see here, I get about 10 clusters. Remember cluster minus one with 849 sentences. This is what the system regards as noise. 849 sentences cannot be clearly identified to any of the other operational clusters, like here, cluster number one with 179 sentences. And then you apply UMAP again, because we want to have a three-dimensional visualization of our sentence embedding model. You do a little bit of bigrams and trigrams for each cluster. You merge some panda operations. I have showed you in detail in the other videos already. We can have a look at the bigrams of the document. That's maybe of importance that you have a interim check if the document has been processed according to your ideas. Take some seconds and here we go. Now we have here trigrams, three words, and we have here the frequency. It appears on our document and the percent, overall percentage. You see machine data revolution, five, zero trust architecture, zero trust mindset, zero trust approach, cost center value center, value driver, data management value, virtual underwriting room, supply chain cost. This sounds about right. This is a very rough test. We use some visualization software, Network X for the graph and Plotly for a three-dimensional interactive presentation. Uh, and here we go. This is our result. For the document Deloitte Tech Trends 2021, we have now here our cluster distribution. Each dot is a sentence. And this sentence has been identified belonging to a cluster or not. The little gray ones here are regarded as noise by the system and color coded you see here cluster where the main dominant words in this cluster or bigrams or trigrams of this cluster are listed here in this short summary so at first the noise we can of course get rid of the noise so that we just have the active cluster and you see this is how our little artificial intelligence system of sentence embedding based on cyborg transformer methodology is building our document content. 
um, have a look at the cluster structure. We have supply chain cost center, value driver, human experience, digital interaction, physical, digital, dichotomy, remote work, working from home, low code. Oh, that's interesting. Code platforms. Oops, there we go. Cloud based, low code platforms. You know, those low codes. Ah, I've written it here for you. A low code development platform, according to Wikipedia, provides a development environment used to create application software through graphical user interfaces and configuration instead of con traditional hand coded computer programming. You have then course, this low code, you can use real time scenarios for decision making, working at home. Of course, it is cloud based real time data. And risk leader, finance leader, strategy approach. You combine all the different risks, you made it visible to all of your staff, to all of your strategies, to all of your decision team. You have, of course, a zero trust approach. Cybersecurity plays a very important part. And the main way of development, machine learning, deep data, deep learning, model development, model deployment, data scientist, you will find here this configuration. So going through all of the different clusters, you can check out for yourself if you think that this kind of algorithm identified the significant components, the significant content of the document. And for your information, if you play around a little bit here with the number of neighbors, if you increase it, for example, like I've done here to 20, you see that the distribution of the most important words within each cluster varies. And if you reduce it here now, to, for example, to five, you have a very local manifold structure. So this really focuses on locally connected, if you want to know, if you want to call it knowledge clusters. And you lose a little bit of the overall global content of the document. But if you want to zero in on a certain text or a certain paragraph on a, on a keyword, I would highly recommend going with lower numbers of neighbors to receive a more local manifold structure. And I have here done here another UMAP neighbor at five to show you if you run the same algorithm over and over again, you do not always reproduce the exact same cluster distribution, the exact same cluster size. Of course, you have a fuzzy topological content within UMAP. So maybe you run it two, three, four, five times to understand what the system uh, is presenting to you. Human neighbors eight, and you see that there's a little bit of a derivation. Uh, at first, of course, you have the cluster number. This is cluster number zero. You have 365 sentences. And you see this is the, about the main or the top words within this cluster. And if you have a little visualization like this i think you're in a very good spot to really understand the content of the cluster you can then go in detail and check out all the sentences that form a cluster to get a real good idea about what the author of the document meant and why it is structured in this way and the last comment the location of the cluster to the other clusters itself is very interesting if you have to, uh, the X, Y, and Z coordinates of this three-dimensional visualization is in a topological space. So there's no real meaning behind X, Y, and Z axis. But the relative content can also encode some information. So if you really want to find out how dense your content structure is represented within a certain AR algorithm, also check out the relative position of the cluster to itself. Thank you.